Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on the BEES, the BDI-3 Battelle Early Academic Survey. I'm filling in for Tammy today, so it's great to have you guys all here on this Friday. I hope that you have a long weekend um, if you have President's Day off. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. A couple things to know. If you look at your sidebar on the, um, for, for me, it's on the right-hand side of the screen. You can see there are two handouts um, and you can download those, but make sure to download them before the end of the presentation. Once it ends, they do disappear. Um, you can reach out to Tammy or I um, afterwards. We can send them to you, but it's easiest to download them now. You can put any questions that you have in the chat box. Um, there's a little box that says questions. You can just open it up and I will check there at the end and make sure I answer any questions that you have. Um, and I think that is all for now. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, so, I am the Clinical Product Support Lead at Riverside Insights. I had a Montessori school of my own for six years and I was a Montessori teacher. Um, I was trained at the American Montessori Society um, at the uh, Montessori Education Center of the Rockies. I was also a kindergarten teacher before that in the public schools and um, my bachelor uh, degree is in child development and education from Colorado College. So if you have uh, seen our new BDI3 book covers, they look like this. If not, they are so much more colorful and bright and inviting than the previous um, BDI2 books. Um, these are all the domain books for um, the Developmental Complete. And I know we're gonna talk about the bees in just a moment, um, but these are the um, five domains for the developmental complete. We have the social, emotional, motor, communication, adaptive, um, and cognitive domains. And to look at each of these domains in the developmental complete test, um, they are again, social, emotional, adaptive, motor, communication, and cognitive. And they each have their own books that we just looked at a moment ago. And you can see the difference on the inside of the books. On the left is BDI2. Um, so kind of it kind of blends together, all very black and white, um, whereas the BDI3 is bright and colorful and easy to see where you are. Um, the layout has changed significantly. Um, so we'll look a little bit more at those. You can see um, the bottom of the page is the domain we're doing, communication, and the subdomain within that, the expressive communication. And then at the top of the page, uh, you can see the three different administration options, structured, observation, or interview, which continue through all the books um, as options for uh, giving the test. Um, we can score this item, for example, that we're looking at right now, uh, the child laughs in any one of these three ways. Um, so structured, we might set up a situation that prompts the child to laugh and see whether or not this occurs. Um, we can gather the data through observation of the child uh, with familiar people, or we can get this information um, from a caregiver or the child's teacher. Um, we also have a rubric of possible scores and guidance uh, for which score would be best in the situation. So for the development complete, um, on the left are the correlation studies that were done. Oh, I'm, and um, the, um, oh, I'm sorry. The, the bees tests 
listed, the bees was compared to the test listed. So I apologize. This is for the bees, not developmental complete. Um, the correlations were very strong. Um, and our technical manual does have a breakdown of all this information that you certainly can go through if you'd like. Uh, we also conducted um, special group studies looking at um, autism, cognitive delays, motor delays, premature birth, speech and language delays, and developmental delays. Um, and we certainly can share this information with you as well. 234 students were in these special group studies. So the bees uh, the, is the newest member of the Battelle suite of assessments. Um, it can be purchased um, either in addition to uh, either our developmental complete or screener test, or you can purchase it on its own. Either is an option. Um, because the bees is an academic test, it's um, geared for children three years, six months through seven years, 11 months. And it measures mathematics and literacy um, following the common core standards. Um, when used with the um, developmental complete, the bees allows the teacher to understand the impact that a child's developmental delays have on the development um, foundational academic skills and plan interventions accordingly. Uh, assessment and pre-academic skills also provide a broader view of the child's future educational needs beyond the preschool setting. Um, so it can be used for pre and post intervention assessment um, for children receiving academic programming designed to be foundational academic skills. The bees, the bees can be used as a pre and post intervention to measure growth. Um, it's important that sufficient time has elapsed between the pre and post test um, to pre prevent um, inflated scores or improve performance due to practice effects. Um, the bees can also be used to determine um, program effectiveness. And in this case, it's recommended that the bees be administered at the beginning and end of the academic school year um, so that there's no second test administration to take place uh, less than four months after the first. So um, as long as there's at least a four month gap between the first and second test, you are good. Um, related use for the bees is a multi-tiered system of support as part of tier one screening. Um, so. Assessment for students transitioning from preschool to kindergarten. The bees is not designed to be used as a standalone kindergarten readiness screening assessment. However, with its focus on academic skills, the bees is well suited to be a component of a comprehensive kindergarten readiness screening program. So let's look first at the literacy domain. This has content that assesses the key foundational skills necessary for early literacy development. The literacy domain provides an assessment of early literacy skills in five subdomains, which are print concepts, phonological awareness, phonics and fluid recognition, I'm sorry, phonics and word recognition, listening comprehension and fluency. The literacy domain provides an assessment of early academic literacy skills in five subdomains, print concepts, phonological awareness. You can see the information there. Here's the others, so phonics and word recognition, listening comprehension, and fluency. Literacy domain takes about 30 minutes, where the mathematics domain takes a, 
about um, 10 minutes to administer. So overall, it's a pretty quick test. So looking at print, print concepts subdomain specifically, its focus is on understanding the features of standard English print through the analysis of a picture book. So the child is given a picture book and asked to identify elements such as the title, the first page, specific text on the page, and directions, um, the direction in which uh, the text should be read. Further, the child is asked to follow along in the text as the examiner reads it and identify individual sentences and punctuation marks. An understanding of basic concepts of print is essential for the child to move forward as a reader. So you can see that's exactly what you'll see on this page in the test. Um, the items in the six areas of phonological awareness, um, the subdomains here are identifying, analyzing, and manipulating sounds within words. So you'll find rhyming, syll um, syllables, on-site rhyme, phoneme identification, phoneme blending and segmenting, phoneme manipulation. And uh, these will show if there's a solid foundation of phonological awareness skills, which leads to mastery of phonics, which in turn leads to being able to read print with confidence. This is the rhyming section. Um, a child is to identify rhyming and non-rhyming words. And this is a syllable, syllables section. Uh, the child breaks the words into syllables and blends the syllables to create words. And you can see this is a great example of how very straightforward the BDI-3 is. Um, what you say is in blue, so there's just no question. It's really easy to know exactly what to do. Okay, on-site rhyme is the next section. Uh, the child is to identify the initial sound in the word and blend initial sounds with word parts to create whole words. Again, you can see um, the what you say is in blue and the score, scoring criteria is below, very easily accessible. Phoneme identification. Uh, the child is to identify phonemes in initial, middle, and ending positions within words. So again, nice and bright pictures and what you say is in blue and the scoring is below. Phoneme blending and segmenting. Uh, the child is to blend individual phonemes to create words as well as to break words into individual phonemes. And that's what this looks like. Phoneme manipulation. The child is to add and remove phonemes in the initial and ending positions in words, substitute phonemes, in the initial, medial, and ending positions to create new words. Okay, so phonics, phonics and word recognition. Um, these seven areas of the phonics and word recognition subdomains focus on connecting syllables um, and letters to the sound they represent. Um, so there's letter identification, letter sound correspondence, early decoding, sight words, nonsense words, long vowel patterns, and inflectional endings. So here's the first one, letter identification. The child is to identify uppercase and lowercase letters presented visually.
Then we have letter sound correspondence. The child is to produce sounds corresponding to the letters presented visually. Early decoding, the child is to match pictures with constant vowels um, or constant words. And cite words, the child is to read words aloud. Nonsense words, um, the child is to apply phonic decoding skills to read nonsense words. And letter vowel patterns, a uh, child is to apply knowledge of long and short vowel patterns to match words or to match pictures with words. And inflectional endings. The child is to identify the correct word in a series based on an understanding of inflectional endings. And listening comprehension. This sub oh, excuse me, this subdomain has um, a focus on the ability to listen and demonstrate understanding of what is has been heard. The child listens to stories and selects responses to questions about those stories. Items progress from short stories with picture choice answers to longer passages with text-based answer choices, some of which require inference. Performance on these items can reveal an examinee's auditory processing ability and other information about listening comprehension skills, which obviously are crucial to overall reading comprehension. Items in the fluency subdomain focus on fluency and automatically um, in picture naming. The child is shown illustrations and asked to identify the objects pictured under the under timed conditions. So fluency measurement ensures that children are reading at an appropriate rate and degree of accuracy for the particular stage of reading development. Fluency is also crucial um, for reading comprehension. Okay, mathematics domain is next. And the B's mathematics domain provides assessment across four subdomains crucial for early mathematics skills, um, numbers, counting, uh, counting and sets, geometry, measurement and data, operations and algebraic thinking. So let's look at examples of these. In the numbers, counting and sets subdomains, the focus is on knowledge of numerals, counting, one-to-one -one correspondence, the ability to compare numbers and quantities, and the ability to extend and complete patterns. Mastering these skills allows children to understand the foundation of computation and performance in this area reflects development of number sense. Items in the geometry subdomain focus on identifying, describing, classifying, and composing shapes. These skills relate to more advanced topics in geometry, such as understanding fractional proportions of shapes, reasoning with and comparing shapes with their attributes, and in later years, working with lines, angles, and their properties. They also relate to other spatial reasoning skills as students develop various ways of composing, partitioning, and transforming shapes. 
The measurement and data subdomain focuses on comparing and sorting sets of objects, describing and comparing measurable attributes of objects, telling time to the hour, and answering questions about data represented in a picture graph. The skills assessed in this subdomain are the precursors to more advanced skills in data representation and analysis, as well as in the measurement and estimation of time, mass, length, and volume. Um, the last one is the operations and algebraic thinking subdomain which focuses on early computation tasks, adding and subtracting up to 10, both with and without illustrations to support these calculations. The skills addressed in this subdomain are the foundation for computation with larger numbers, more complex problem solving, and connecting real world, real world contexts to mathematical representations. Okay, so we can take a look now at some of the B, the B's reports that you can get. The BDI3 report is available in a modular format that allows you to choose which sections you would like to include in your reports. Um, this is a list of the possible sections that can be included. So you can see um, on the right there are all the different scores available when you score the test in Riverside score. And let me show you what the report looks like. I love that it's so colorful and bright. You can see easily where the child is, if they're on track, if they need support, or if they're in a monitor type of category, and you can see that specifically for each of the subdomains. So this one is literacy, and this one is math. And for the Bs, as well as our developmental complete and screening tests that are all part of the BDI-3. These can be um, administered and scored using our mobile data solutions app, um, which is part of the access you receive um, when you subscribe to Riverside Score. The app um, allows you to give the test and score the test uh, without hauling around, around all the big domain books. So there's several options. This is what it would look like if you're scoring on Riverside score and just entering the raw scores into the form. Um, you can notice that uh, this screen is optimized to be used by a variety of people with on, within a team. You select the examiner who is doing that um, domain or subdomain, and um, it can be a variety of people. This is an example at the Developmental Complete where maybe a uh, speech language pathologist does part, physical therapist does part, that's always an option. It is best practice to have the whole test completed within 30 days. This is what the mobile data solution app looks like. It is available um, for iOS, Android, and Windows devices. And like I said, it's free as part of the um, subscription to Riverside Score. Um, online and offline. A lot of people don't believe us, but you really can score the child and run a report without any internet, internet access on your tablet. Um, and, you know, you don't have to bring around the big domain books every time you give the test. Um, it's a nice landscape 
design. Um, also, portrait mode is supported. Um, so it allows for easier use um, and you just bring a small stimulus book with you that has all the pictures that the child would see. And then this is what it looks like. It's exactly the same as the domain book on the inside, has the same categories. You can see which domain you're doing, what subdomain, and you score right there on it. Um, it will tell you when you've reached the basal and when you've reached the ceiling. It has the timer right there in it and um, keeps tally for you as well. It also has all the examiner instructions like we discussed before in blue, so you know what to say out loud um, and what to read. And at the top of the screen, there is where the basal and ceiling are. And then you can run a basic report, even offline, using the mobile data solution. Um, this is what the basic report will look like. Um, this is for the Bs. Um, it displays the student's raw scores and an indicator of their percentile rank um, that their scores fall in. Uh, when you sync uh, your mobile data solution with Riverside score, then you're able to run the more robust reports um, and everything that's available on the Riverside score platform is there. We have training for BDI3. Um, it's not required, but certainly an option if you'd like to get more information and make sure everything um, is the way you know it to be and that all your questions are answered. We have um, on-site training, which can be virtual or in person. We have webinars that can be on demand, so you just watch whenever you have time, or live. Um, and then also we have uh, some e-learning within the Riverside Score platform um, that comes free. So you're able to get a general idea of the test. Um, there's one video particularly for um, examiners and one for the account holders. All right, and some contact information. Um, I'm going to leave this up for a minute. So you can write down any emails that you need. Um, we're happy to help not only with the BDI3 product line, but any of our other product lines as well, uh, WJ, um, the Batteria, or the Woodcock Munoz, um, ECAD, any of them, we can help with questions. Um, Tammy's email is the top one. She is out today, so thank you for your patience with me filling in for her. Then we have Cheryl and Tom, whose emails are also on here. Um, probably best to email Tammy, and then we can always, if you should speak to somebody else, we can always send your email to them. And while you write that down, I'm going to take a look and see if we have any questions. Okay, I don't see any yet. Um, so I'll give everybody a minute to write down uh, any email addresses they need to, send in any last minute questions, and don't forget to download those two handouts.
Okay, I haven't seen any questions come in. Um, so thank you guys again for spending this Friday with me and um, listen, learning a little bit more about the bees. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and join us again um, for the next webinar that we have. Thanks everybody, bye now.